This video is sponsored by Reverb LP. Hit the link below to buy a vinyl or two and help the channel and the physical format of music to stay alive and well. Homeshake is the R&B pop and solo project of Montreal-based singer-songwriter Peter Sager. The project was formed in 2012, but although he wanted to do his own thing, Peter spent a lot of time supporting Mac DeMarco as a part of his live act. In 2014, Peter left and decided to make Homeshake into something more serious. He has released three albums under the moniker so far and had close to 1 million monthly listeners on Spotify when this video was made. In this day and age where every artist is her own label, promoter, manager, producer, let alone musician, the idea that you have to work meticulously hard to get somewhere has become the standard mindset in the music industry. Now, Peter, he ignores this mindset in all possible aspects. He tours only during the summer, makes music whenever he's bored, and generally seems like a slacker when it comes to what he's doing. So how come he's able to reach out to so many people? Let's find out. Peter loved music from the time he was barely a meter in height. His first instrument was the drums, and when he was 11, he would fall asleep to Miles Davis kind of blue every time he went to bed. During daytime, when he came home from school, there would always be some soothing 90s R&B hits on Much Music, the Canadian equivalent of MTV. That's when he discovered one of his favorite songs, Maria Carey's Underneath the Stars. Peter met Mac DeMarco during high school, and they obviously became friends after finding common grounds in music. After they started a band in 2012 and released some albums under Mac DeMarco, they did a ton of touring. In an interview, the band explained that they had done at least 100 shows during that year. We've been on tour for, since like, for like a year pretty much, but we had a bit of time. We did a couple shows in Europe, then we did a couple shows in the States, a couple shows in Canada. And then after this we go to Australia, so. Oh wow, we're so, we're doing so it really is in the 50 stops. What? This is like... It must be like hundreds. Yeah, eight. Probably... So they were incredibly busy, and Peter didn't really enjoy that. One of the things that he wanted to do in his own project, Home Shake, was to do less touring. But this wasn't the only change that he saw happening with his own band. They would never play any encores during their shows, they simply played their shows, walked off stage, and then they were done with their business. I should have made this more clear, I usually do, but I'm a little off tonight. We never do an encore, because we just play all of them that we already know. So that last one, that was the encore. We already did it. At some point in his career, he moved from Edmonton to Toronto, mainly because the rent was cheaper and there was an expanding music scene there. But personally, he would rarely go to raves or parties in general though. Peter is sort of a self-proclaimed homebody, someone who enjoys his own company and just being in his flat with his girlfriend. But in the beginning of 2018, some changes had to be made. I do all my work at home. There was a studio where I recorded the first three records, but it fell apart recently because it was also a DIY venue and a jam space. Everyone just kind of got sick and tired of making it work. And then a new landlord came in and wanted to raise the rent by like $600 or something. So we were like, nope. And now I record at home on my computer. Home Shake's first album, In the Shower, was released on October 7th. 2014. This is probably the album that reminds the most of Mac DeMarco's jangle pop style with its dry percussion and heavy reliance on the guitar. It features fun and catchy tracks like Michael and Cash's Money, more relaxed R&B tunes like OK and Chowder, and even more psychedelic tracks like Slow and Home at Last. Overall, it's a very relaxing album that probably suits you best when the wintry Sunday sun hits you in the eye. 
or when you're about to take a huge cold slab of haagen after a tiring day at work. Now the second album, Midnight Snack, is a dramatic turn in sound. Peter decided to use synths and drum machines as a replacement for guitars and real-life drum kits on almost half of the tracks on the album, creating a hybrid between the old album and something new. Something that is still in continuum from the old album is Peter's laid-back mentality though. It's very smooth and chill all the way through. This album also features Peter's most well-known track, Give It To Me. A psychedelic R&B banger that fills your ears with just the right amount of love, soul and strangeness. Now, finally, the third album is more or less like the second one. It uses more electronic beats and melodies compared to real-life instruments in this case though. And that's alright, but if you ask me, I personally prefer the first two records because Peter relies way more on his own voice to carry the melody on this one. And it just doesn't work for me, he doesn't have the best voice and when the melody is carried by his voice, it's really easy to see his flaws. Peter Sagar is a chill dude with a ton of musical talent, but I think he's still finding his voice. The guy is just 28 years old and he's probably got many years ahead of him in music. In terms of the question that I asked in the beginning of this video, how he managed to be such a slacker while still being successful, I think it comes down to his talent, touring, and reputation. He does have a fair bit of talent when it comes to making music. It seems like he's doing enough touring to stay relatable, and his reputation for being in Mac DeMarco's live act certainly helped his career to move on. Pete has also been talking about doing a collaboration and at least two more albums for the close future, so things are looking really bright, and I'm really excited to see what he's gonna do next. That's it guys, thank you so much for watching. If you're new to Homeshake, I've created a Spotify playlist below with some of my favorite songs from his discography. Hopefully that can serve as a great introduction, check it out if you want to, and I'll talk to you later. Cheers.